The question is, where do you begin restructuring Nigeria? <laughs> but the truth is, we might have even missed the restructuring train if we are not careful. Wow. Pastor Adifar is not a man unknown to me. I, I, I once attended that church. And um, he's a merchant of hope. Like all pastors, they deal in hope. Christianity itself is about hope. But when you hear one of the most hopeful merchants of the gospel in Nigeria begin to speak of the plan B, hmm. <laughs> you then realize just how hopeless our situation has become. Oh, oh. That is on one hand. And then you hear the asininity of some people who should know better, imagining that a change of personnel might possibly save Nigeria. No man, no single man, or even a group of men, without changing our current structure, can change Nigeria. Hmm. The problem with Nigeria are foundational, the problems, they are foundational. We are not citizens in our own country. We've talked about this before. Mm. But the most dangerous part of our situation is that we are not a country governed by laws. We do not have rulers who believe themselves bound by the laws. They themselves have placed themselves above the law. The law appears to be what the occupant of Asso Rock says it is at any point in time. And that is suggestive of a society that is not anchored by law. We can talk restructuring, but we also must remember that within the same system where we are seeking a restructuring, there exist dates such as the 20th of October, and there still exist vast number of Nigerians who have bought into the lie that nothing happened on that day. Hmm. And yet, some of us continue to hope and believe that we can somehow prevent the looming war. Because when someone like Pastor Paul is telling you he has a plan B, and he's talking about how these guys are crazy, there is a lot he has left unsaid, but that we must, on our own, begin to unpack. In this country, you are having students picked from their classrooms, picked from their dormitories. The government is busy negotiating the freedom of innocent kids with people they have termed bandits when they should be correctly labeled terrorists. But in Imo State, the army is proud to advertise the number of IPOB people whom it had tagged terrorists. And we are all in the same country. Look, the matter of Nigeria structuring is just a byword for me now. It's a byword for as best as we can, a turnaround. Nigeria is going to end up either in a war or it would have to find a peaceful path through a revolution. A revolution simply means a turnaround. It means turn around. If the path you are taking is unsustainable, it becomes inevitable that anyone with a modicum of brain in their head ought to understand the urgent need to turn around. Why should it be so difficult for people to understand that in this age and time, it is impossible to keep anyone down by force? It is in human nature to demand freedom. It is in human nature to demand equality and justice. The Nigeria that is being built in this age and time is one that is, appears to be raising back to antediluvian times, the Middle Ages. We are in a place right now where the state has lost control of vast territories. 